as we have um, been watching and paying attention to what the Atlantic Basin has been doing. And when it comes to forecasting these tropical cyclones, there's been a lot of buzz around those AI models this season, mainly because it's really the first hurricane season where we've seen what they can do, especially when compared to those traditional physics-based models. To help us answer and discuss this, we bring in Andy Hazelton, associate scientist at the University of Miami. He's joining us now. Andy, good to see you again. Hypothetically, all right, I'm asking you a hypothetical, which is maybe not the best way to start off this conversation. But let's say the NHC only had AI models to use this season. How accurate would their forecasts be? Is that even a fair question to ask? My, my whole point here, because I don't want it to look like it's AI versus the NHC, but are we seeing a positive trend toward these models? Yeah, definitely, because obviously it's performed really well this year. The stats have borne that out looking at individual cases. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest thing when talking about forecasters using it is just that trust that they get from over time. So I think seeing some of the stats this year and, and how well it's performed for track, um, especially, and even intensity, think about like Google's um, DeepMind and stuff like that. Um, I think we're going to see forecasters use that more and more going forward because, you know, in some cases it's even outperformed NHG, which is, is, is pretty amazing to see. And, um, you know, so I think that I know it's something that they're already integrating into their forecast suite, something that it probably will be doing even more of going forward. And, and when you say, because that's been a lot of the chatter or some of the chatter that I've seen that they, there has been discussion on how AI has done better than the National Hurricane Center, as you had, had mentioned, in, in regards to, to what, track, intensity, both, how, how have you seen AI outperform the NHC? Well, yeah, for, for certain storms, it's it's had a lower track error overall than NHC, um, you know, and, and NHC tends to, um, they tend to beat or, you know, any individual model or consensus models. And I know as the year goes on, it's like I think incorporating um, this um, Google DeepMind and AI yeah, and things more and more. So I think, you know, we're starting to see, like I said, the forecasters really trust that and um, becoming a bigger part of the forecast toolkit. Um, and even for some of the individual storms I've seen, um, like for uh, Hurricane uh, Gabrielle and then Humberto and Imelda, um, some of the AI models, um, like like um, Google's newer DeepMind that they're working with NHC on, actually did pretty well for intensity overall too. And that's something that was not the case even just a year ago. So, um, you know, it's all kind of evolving rapidly, and you know, I'm excited to see where it goes over the next couple of years. Yeah, kind of leading to. Um... My next question, you brought up intensity and also just how rapid it's been moving, right? I know, I know this is really the first year that we've included AI. The National Hurricane Center has included AI in terms of the, the forecast, but it, it's been around longer than a year. It's been something that's been tweaked and, and worked on even previous to this year. Um, but intensity forecasts do seem to be the biggest struggle for traditional models. And for AI, I guess it's something also um, that'll be tweaked moving forward. Yeah, and it's still something we're probably not going to get perfectly. Like even when AI models do well, sometimes it misses rapid intensification. And, um, you know, resolution, being able to get those small scale details of the eye wall, that's something that's hard for all models and AI models tend to be even lower resolution. So, um, you know, it's, there's going to be a lot of components to improving the intensity forecast going forward, you know, getting better data, collecting more data, improving all of our models, both the physics based and the AI ones. But it's at least encouraging to see that we've made some progress with some of what, what Google has been doing and, and others um, in that arena, to, you know, because we want as many tools as we can to get these forecasts right. I think just the term artificial intelligence, right? We, we say it a lot, but, but you hear AI and it does sound like a thing of the future. Mm -hmm. But then to actually witness and, and see how I think of Andy, I think of Imelda and how Google AI was able to latch on to that, that right, that 90 degree turn. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it was one of the first to show or indicate that with Imelda off the Southeast coast that um, stands out to me. But yeah, as you had mentioned, other, other systems too, uh, AI has done well. If, if we were to have the ability to add additional data um, to these AI models, is there something that you think is lacking still that could be added to perhaps enhance and improve the, the forecasts? Yeah, one thing I think we need more of is these you know, so-called training data sets because um, AI needs, you know, basically past data to learn from. And right now that tends to be kind of a lower resolution reanalysis like what the European Center puts out. You get a lot from that and you can do some bias correction like what Google does to sort of improve that. But if you get a high resolution training data set, um, you know, like they can really resolve hurricane structure, you could maybe train AI on that 
and not only be able to predict you know, track and intensity, but even structure, size, um, you know, eye size, you know, radius of tropical storm force winds, all these things that are important for impacts. So I think as we, and that's something we're really looking at is, is what are some data sets that we can use, you know, whether it's past model data, observations like the Hurricane Hunter observations to have a big enough data set to train in a, kind of a higher resolution version of this. Such a valid point. I'm glad you brought up the Hurricane Hunters who are out there collecting the real data, real-time data, right, yeah. that ultimately help these forecasts become a lot more accurate. I'm curious, too, for you, Andy, when it comes to looking at any cyclone that does develop in the tropics, do you find yourself going to perhaps the Google AI, let's say, or either of the AI models before you look at some of the more traditional models? I think I kind of use a, an approach you know, of, of using all of them, really, you know, mm -hmm. blend. Um, I work on also with, in my role at UM, I work on um, the half model, more traditional um, numerical weather prediction. But, um, you know, Google AI, like I said, have done some of the verification. It's done really well this year. So um, kind of like you were talking about a minute ago for the system in the Caribbean, when you, it's really when you bring all these different models together and um, kind of look at the average um, sort of an ensemble mean, that's typically what gives you the best result, you know, the, and, um, you know, when we're validating the Google model, for example, it's really that ensemble mean of all the different members that, that we're evaluating. So that tends to kind of, over the course of a season, you know, reduce the error. But, you know, for example, for the system in the Caribbean, if you look at, you know, any individual ensemble, whether it's AIFS or, or Google or the Euro ensemble, there's all sorts of different possibilities. And so, um, you know, picking any one of them is not necessarily going to be accurate. But so hopefully, you know, in the mean, yeah, you get a better idea of what the most likely outcome is. I'm telling you, I know it's it's you know artificial intelligence, it's computers, but at the end of the day, isn't that just how life is too? Mm -hmm. To 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 side one way or the other, these extremes yeah. sometimes it's it's finding that that middle ground. It's a life mm -hmm. lesson, and we don't have to discuss that because hey, <laughs> uh, we're talking about AI and forecast models. But Andy, always a pleasure. Appreciate you uh, joining us this morning. Andy Hazelton, associate scientist at the University of Miami. Thank you. Thank thank you.